Welcome to Holistic Wellness 24-7. In today's video, we're diving into 10 ways to support someone with bipolar disorder, helpful tips. In this video, we'll introduce the topic by briefly explaining what bipolar disorder is, its common symptoms and the challenges faced by both those with the condition and their loved ones. We will offer practical strategies for supporting someone effectively, which can alleviate some of the difficulties. By the end, you'll have a clearer, simple roadmap to improve a sufferer's well-being, step by step. This subject is close to me since I had this condition for 10 years. Thankfully, I have been symptom-free and off medication these past 12 years. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Gerard here. Supporting someone with bipolar disorder can feel like navigating a storm, but knowing what to do can turn you from a bystander into a lifeline. Let's dive into 10 crucial ways you can make a meaningful difference. Stay listening to the end for there is a bonus point that you will find of real value. Imagine a pendulum swinging between mania, periods of intense energy and impulsivity and depression, where feelings of sadness and hopelessness can be overwhelming. These shifts can be incredibly challenging, not only for the person experiencing them, but also for their loved ones. But here's the thing, you don't have to weather this storm alone. This video is all about equipping you with practical strategies to support someone with bipolar disorder effectively, because even small acts of understanding and preparation can make a world of difference. Let's get started. So you're hanging out with your friend or loved one who has bipolar disorder and they're in a really energetic, maybe even manic state. It's tempting to get caught up in that energy, right? but too much stimulation can be overwhelming for someone in a manic episode. Their brain is already operating at a heightened level, like a car engine revved up to the max. Adding more fuel to that fire can make things worse. Guide them towards calmer, more grounding experiences. Suggest a peaceful walk in nature instead of a shopping spree. Choose activities that promote relaxation and stability. Help them channel their energy in a healthy and sustainable way. Okay, let's talk about boundaries. It's essential when supporting someone with bipolar disorder. Think of boundaries like the lines on a highway. They keep everyone safe. Setting boundaries isn't about being controlling. It's about protecting yourself and your loved one. During manic episodes, someone might act impulsively or become abusive. Establish clear limits on what you will and will not tolerate. Let me give you an example. If your brother gets agitated in large groups, suggest taking breaks, say, if you feel anxious, it's okay to take a break. We set a clear boundary while offering support. It's about creating a safe environment for everyone. Be honest about your own limitations. You can't be available 24 seven. It's okay to say no and seek support. Setting boundaries is an act of love for everyone. Let's face it, when you care about someone with bipolar disorder, you know that difficult times might be a part of the journey. But here's the good news. Being prepared can make all the difference. That's where creating a crisis plan comes in. Think of it like a fire drill for mental health. You hope you never have to use it, but if a crisis occurs, you'll be ready. So what goes into a crisis plan? First, gather essential contact information. This includes your loved one's therapist, psychiatrist, and any other healthcare professionals involved in their care. It's also crucial to have emergency contact numbers for local hospitals, crisis hotlines, and trusted friends or family members who can step in to help. Next, talk to your loved one about their early warning signs for mania and depression. What are some specific changes in behavior, sleep patterns, or thought processes that usually indicate an episode might be coming on? Having this knowledge can help you both recognize the need for intervention early on. Now, discuss how they'd like you to support them during a crisis. Would they prefer you to stay by their side or would they rather have some space? Are there specific calming techniques or activities that they find helpful? Having these conversations beforehand can prevent misunderstandings and make it easier to navigate challenging situations. Recognize your role's value. You know, one of the most challenging aspects of supporting someone with bipolar disorder is remembering that you're not their therapist, their doctor or their savior. It's not your job to fix them or to single-handedly manage their condition. And sometimes that, that realization can leave you feeling kind of powerless, right? Like, well, what's the point of all this effort if I can't actually cure them? But here's the thing, your role 
while different from a medical professional's is no less valuable. In fact, you play a crucial role in their support system, offering a kind of love, understanding and stability that even the most skilled therapist can't replicate. So, if you ever find yourself questioning the impact you're making, remember this. You are not responsible for their bipolar disorder, but you are responsible for the way you respond to it. And that response, that consistent, loving presence, can make all the difference. Think about it. You're the one who sees them, not just as their diagnosis, but as the complex, multifaceted human being they are. You're the one who reminds them, even on their darkest days, that they are worthy of love, belonging, and a bright future. Learn about bipolar disorder. Okay, folks, let's talk about the importance of education. See, when it comes to supporting someone with bipolar disorder, knowledge isn't just power, it's empathy, it's understanding, and it's the key to building a stronger, more supportive relationship. Think about it. You wouldn't try to fix a car engine without first understanding how it works, right? The same goes for mental health. The more you learn about bipolar disorder, its causes, its symptoms, its treatments, the better equipped you'll be to navigate the complexities of this condition alongside your loved one. Now, I'm not saying you need to become a psychiatrist or anything, but taking the time to educate yourself shows your loved one that you care enough to really understand what they're going through. It shows them that you're in their corner, ready to learn to listen and to support them in whatever ways you can. Plus, here's the thing, the more you know about bipolar disorder, the less likely you are to take their behaviors personally. See, during a manic episode, someone might say or do things they wouldn't normally do. They might be irritable, impulsive, even verbally aggressive. And it's easy to internalize those behaviors to feel hurt or rejected. But when you understand that these behaviors are often driven by the illness itself, not by malice or a lack of love, it can help you respond with more compassion and less reactivity. Track moods. Tracking moods in bipolar disorder is like marking dates on a calendar, but for patterns and triggers. It's about becoming a detective, finding clues to manage the condition. Use a journal or a smartphone app, whatever works best. Track mood shifts, energy levels, sleep patterns and symptoms. Consistent logging helps identify patterns and triggers. Don't play doctor. Let's be real, when you care about someone with bipolar disorder, it's tempting to want to fix them, to find the magic solution that will make their symptoms disappear. You might find yourself researching different medications, suggesting alternative therapies, or even trying to diagnose them based on a blog post you read. But here's the thing, you are not their doctor, and trying to play that role can actually do more harm than good. See, bipolar disorder is a complex condition that requires professional diagnosis and treatment. It's not something you can Google your way out of and offering unsolicited medical advice can undermine their relationship with their healthcare providers and make them feel like you don't trust their judgment. So, instead of trying to play doctor, focus on being a supportive friend or family member. Listen without judgment, offer words of encouragement and be there to celebrate their victories and offer comfort during setbacks. Your role is to provide emotional support, not to diagnose or treat their condition. Trust that their doctors and therapists have their best interests at heart and are working with them to develop a treatment plan that meets their individual needs. This next topic is tough, but it's important. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, Situations can escalate and police intervention might become necessary. It's not an ideal scenario and it's crucial to remember that involving law enforcement should always be a last resort reserved for situations where someone's safety is at imminent risk. Now, I know what you're thinking. Police interactions can be particularly risky for individuals with mental health conditions and you're right to be concerned. That's why it's essential to have a plan in place to minimize potential harm and ensure your loved one's rights are protected. First and foremost, if your loved one is experiencing a mental health crisis and there's no immediate danger, see if you can de-escalate the situation yourself. Speak calmly, validate their feelings and try to create a sense of safety. Avoid making sudden movements or raising your voice as this can escalate the situation further. If you feel like the situation is escalating beyond your control or if you believe your loved one is a danger to themselves or others, it's time to call for help. When contacting emergency services, be clear and concise about the situation. 
Let's face it, supporting someone with bipolar disorder can be emotionally draining. You're constantly navigating their mood swings, managing crises and putting their needs before your own. And while it's incredibly rewarding to be there for someone you love, it's also essential to prioritize your own well-being. Because here's the thing, you can't pour from an empty cup. If you're running on fumes, you're not going to be much help to your loved one or to yourself. So what does self-care look like when you're a caregiver? Well, it's different for everyone, but it's essentially about making a conscious effort to replenish your own emotional, physical and mental energy reserves. It's about carving out time for activities that bring you joy, whether it's reading, taking a hot bath, spending time in nature or catching up with friends. Remember, taking care of yourself isn't selfish, it's essential. It allows you to show up as a more patient, compassionate and supportive caregiver in the long run. You know that feeling when you're sailing through clear skies, the sun is shining and the water is calm? Well, in the world of bipolar disorder, those moments of stability are like little slices of paradise. They're times to breathe, to reconnect and to reinforce the positive habits and coping mechanisms that can help weather future storms. See, when someone is in a stable phase, their symptoms are less intense, their moods are more balanced and they have more energy and motivation to engage in life. It's a time for growth, for healing and for strengthening the foundation of their mental well-being. So how can you make the most of these precious periods of stability? Well, first and foremost, celebrate them. Acknowledge the progress your loved one has made, no matter how small it might seem. Celebrate their victories, their resilience and their commitment to managing their condition. Use this time to reinforce positive behaviors and coping strategies. If exercise, mindfulness, or spending time in nature has been helpful in the past, encourage them to make these activities a regular part of their routine. Consistency is key when it comes to managing bipolar disorder and these healthy habits can help prevent relapses and maintain stability over time. Remember, these periods of stability are precious gifts. So, there you have it, 10 tips to help you navigate the complexities of supporting someone with bipolar disorder. I would like to share with you my pathway back to being symptom free for over 12 years. It arose by embracing holistic wellness practices. It involved managing my mind, body and spirit, adopting daily meditation to quieten my mind. Stoicism also helped here. Adopting a healthy diet, low in carbohydrates, avoiding all processed foods was pivotal. Adopting a daily exercise regime prioritizing regular rest and sleeping regular hours. It's a lifetime commitment, but so worth it considering the wellness I have regained. My approach is not a one size fits all. Someone with bipolar can find a pathway, but it will be unique to you and your carer. Remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about showing up with compassion, understanding, and a willingness to learn and grow alongside your loved one. Even small acts of kindness, a listening ear or a helping hand can make a world of difference. You're not alone in this journey. There are countless resources, support groups and mental health professionals ready to guide and support you every step of the way. Supporting someone with bipolar disorder isn't easy, but every small act of kindness, understanding and preparation helps pave the way for a better future. If you found these tips helpful, please like, share and subscribe for more content on mental health and wellness. Remember, your support not only helps those directly affected, but also raises awareness and reduces stigma. Let's continue this journey together.